No peace. Say, though they may have a great share of prosperity, if you wait. Yet they have no share in the inward and spiritual and everlasting peace. They don't have it. Even those in power, you know. What was the militant boy saying? Ah, we are tired of this creed. Thank God I'm next to get. But when they were there, they were making noise on, on paper. Am I talking now? They were making noise on paper. We have done this. We have done that. We are blown. We are blown that. But yet there is no peace. Hmm? It's the same thing. Look at rebel leaders. Wherever they find themselves. Are they peaceful? Look at your government today. Those who call Papa Deceive Begin. Eh? Papa Deceive Begin Party. Are they having peace? They are looking at me. Don't you know Papa Deceive Begin? Every state they are, they have problem. They want to control. Anytime you feel you must control at all costs, you are into trouble. Because it's your heart that is deceiving you. Hallelujah. You can only go that far, but you won't go too far. Hallelujah. So, what am I talking about? Go to the book of Jude. I'm just showing you what the sea means. The sea have nothing to do with Atlantic Ocean. When the Bible says the sea gave up the dead, what is it saying? Some people were literally going to decamp from every camp of evil and plotting to destroy people. They say, I am okay. I won't do it anymore. The sea will give up the dead. Just one word, I'm messy, and everybody's running out from the creek. The sea is giving up the dead in that realm. <laughs> we are not ready for this anymore. Am I talking to somebody? We are tired. The sea is giving up the dead. Men are running out from the creeks. I throw down my I, I surrender. Yeah, please, I need good food here. They are running out. Wicked people will definitely give up. Am I saying militants were wicked? No. Get me right? Don't misinterpret me. But I'm saying where there is ever struggle in a manner not orchestrated by God. In fact, God does not even use such method to overthrow systems. How did he overthrow Nebuchadnezzar? A decree by the washers. Make him a beast. Let him eat grass. After seven years, it will come to his mind that God ruled in the affairs of men. And then he will come back to the throne. How did God overthrow Ahab? One spirit said, I will become a lying spirit in the heart of his prophet. And they lied to Ahab. And what happened? He had went to war and was killed. God has a way of removing one king and putting another king. Let them try whatever they want to do. In your system, in your home, in your families, in your business. No matter the king who is trying to wave as the storm of the sea, only one thing will end up. Foam. Hallelujah. Jude, I'm reading from the 11th chapter. Woe to them for they have gone in the way of Cain. I ran greedily after the arrow of Balaam for reward. And perished in the gain saying of Cory. These are spot in your feasts of charity. What spots of charity? I'm talking of love offering, love feast in the church. We have people in the church who are acting like Cain. Who want to kill Abel. Hallelujah. They've gone the word of Cain. Run great after the arrow of Balaam. We are prophets. We are prophets aim for reward. In the church. Destroying people's lives and system by their words of prophecy and the so-called visions. We have Cain who will be jealous about what God is doing in your brother's life. And they want to kill him. They are all in the church. He said these are spots in your feast of love. When we come to church, it's supposed to be a love feast. Love feast is not eating, eating food. This is love feast partaking of one another. We break bread because we are the body of Christ. I share and you share. We are sharing the love of the brothers. The brotherhood of Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us. And they perish against saying of Corey. Who is Corey? Remember Corey? James and Jambri. These are people that try to withstood Moses. They are not afraid of authorities. They are not afraid of dignitaries. They come to God, they can open their mouth to say things against the people that God is using to implement his program upon the face of the earth. No fear, no doubt. In their heart, they don't have any doubt into what they do. They say all manner of things. Look at the class of people here. We have Eber, we have Balaam, we have Korah. Go and read. And what did the Bible say next? 
Hallelujah. Say, these are spotting your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water. Carried about the wind. Toes. Trees whose fruit wither and without fruit. Twice they plucked up by the roots. Raging waves of the sea. Forming out their own shame. Wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Did you get that? What did the Bible call them? Hallelujah. Wandering stars, clouds without water. See the waving, forming out their own shames. Hallelujah. They are always, you see, the sea, do you know how the sea works? It's majorly high sea, it's never at rest. Captain is here. There's always storm. Though there's high tide and whatever, there's always storm. When you are a sea person, there is no peace in your life. You are always agitated. You are always scheming. You are always planning. Restless people. You need some rest. You need some calmness. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? You need some calmness in your life. You plan too much. How much of this thing you are planning? It's planning to run down people. You plan too much. Huh? Raging waves. Uh, you see, they say it's so noisy. It's always boasting. But one funny thing. We have good, good seafaring people here. No matter how stubborn the steam may be, the ship is still sailing through. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So it's just noise making. You hear the noise, see the foam, see the wine. No, you can't sink the ship. The ship is still going. That's why it's raging waves of the sea. When something is raging, it's boasting. It's, it's saying, I can do this. But let me tell you something. No matter what the sea tries to do, it's nothing but foam at the end of the day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These are restless people. Their imaginations are completely evil. They are noisy and boisterous in their professions. They think they will drown you overnight. No matter what they are trying to do, there is going to be an end to it. Yeah. Wild and ungovernable human beings. In their passions, they are ungovernable. There are people you say stay, they will not stay. They are never comforted, they are never comfortable. You tell them to be at peace, they will never be at peace. You instruct them, they don't take instruction. Raging waves of the sea. They think they know. They think they understand. They think they understand better than you who is even instructing them. Raging waves of the sea. But all of this thing amounts to nothing. Scheming and planning can bring the result. Because God has set a boundary. Hallelujah. They seem to produce nothing but foam. And to plant their own shame. That after all their wide riding and agitation. You should affect no more. No more effect. No more effect. They can only try the best they can. I want to let you know this morning. There is no power in this universe that can sink you. No power in this universe that can sink you. Let me show you how God has ordained it. Talk with me to the book of Job. The book of Job. Job 38. I read 7 and 8. When the money stands sung together. And all the sons of God shout for joy. God is asking Job a question anyway. If you look at verse 1. Verse 8 now says. Or who shut up the sea with doors when it breaks forth as it has issued out of the womb? What does it mean to shut up? Job 38, verse 7 and 8. What does it mean to shut up the sea? It's like God sets a boundary to it that he cannot pass over. Hallelujah. God sets a boundary to it that he cannot pass over. Even with the greatest of all tsunami things we have seen. There is a level they can get to and it must recede. It doesn't go beyond. God sets a boundary for the roaring of the sea. All the troubles around that you seem to be experiencing, God sets a boundary. And this trouble will not cross those boundaries. So don't be too impatient in waiting. God is at work. Hallelujah. The Bible says God set a boundary to the sea. Shut the doors against them. That is why when the sea comes to the shore, it doesn't go beyond. It stops there. And it begins to go back. 
the only thing you see is the foam and the death that he has brought up. And that is a part of the thing that has robbed in your life. The foams and the deaths that you are bringing. But they can't harm you. Because you can still wash yourself. Even if the foam touch you, you can wash. Even if the death comes, you can wash yourself. There is hope for you.